Hello, my name is Rajiv Priyadarshi and I work for PR3 Systems. And then in the next couple of minutes, we'll be talking about an exciting tool from IBM called Data Stage. Data Stage is a tool which is used for extraction, transformation, and loading of data, popularly known as ETL. So within the Data Stage tool, there are a lot of different topics. And to do justice, in the next couple of minutes, we'll be focusing on a specific topic, and that topic is called Parallel Processing Architecture of Data Stage. Now, before we go into parallel processing, let me ask you a quick question. If my son, who is 11 years old, he came to me a couple of days back, and he said that, Dad, if one lawyer takes 15 days to file a case, how many uh, time, how much time will 20 lawyers take to do the same thing? And with no offense to the lawyers who might be listening to this recording, uh, I said, you know, it should be 15 divided by 10 or something. I said, Dad, you didn't get the joke. 15 lawyers can never come to one agreement, so the case cannot be filed. So I laughed at the joke, but thought within. Does it always mean that you've got multiple resources who are working on the same task, and the output is going to be faster? And the answer is no. So what exactly is parallel processing? Parallel processing in CPU cycles or in pure operating system standpoint means leveraging the power of multiple CPUs to achieve a common goal. So how do you implement parallel processing? So there are two main approaches. The first approach is called multi-threading and the second approach is called multi-processing. When you use multi-threading, you've got different threads which are all a part of the same process, which work on different CPUs or the same CPU and working on different tasks at the same time. In case of multiprocessing, you have got different processes which work on different sections, different sets of data, different tasks at the same time. And in data stage, the way we implement parallel processing is by using multiprocessing because we want the architecture to be independent of the platform and it's easier to do that by using multiprocessing. The second important concept within parallel processing is the hardware architecture. So as we discussed, the first was the software implementation which is multi-threading and multiprocessing and the second is the hardware configuration. And there are three main types of hardware configuration which are being used in the industry. The first one is called a dedicated single CPU machine, which is a laptop or a desktop. It is the simplest architecture. And the second is called SMP or symmetric multiprocessing. In symmetric multiprocessing, you have got one machine with multiple CPUs and the multiple CPUs, they share the disk and they share the memory. And the last configuration is called MPP or massively parallel processing in which you have got different machines and with their own CPU, with their own disk, and with their own memory, and all of these different machines, they work together for a common goal. So with these three different hardware infrastructures, you can achieve a lot of different things. Now what is unique about data stage is that parallel processing is a runtime construct, which basically means that you can develop in a single CPU architecture run it in qualitative uh, QA or software testing in an SMP environment and when you go to production we leverage MPP or massively parallel processing without recompiling your jobs and that friends is a unique feature. Now coming to the concept of parallel processing we have got two different kinds of parallel processing which is available in data stage. The first one is called pipeline parallel processing. When we talk of pipeline parallel processing, a great way to remember what pipeline parallel processing is to remember assembly line processing as uh, propounded or brought forth by Henry Ford. Now, when assembly line processing was introduced, it revolutionized the auto industry. Why? Because for the first time, different people could work on different cars at the same time 
and there was a conveyor belt which used to move from one person to another. Exactly the same way we can implement power processing in data stage. The way it works is that, for example, if you're trying to extract from a database, you extract the first 100 rows, you, and then you send it to the next stage where you do the transformation. And once you send the set of data to the next stage where you do some kind of transformation, what you do is go and extract the next 100 rows. Now, if you look at a data state job, every stage in the data state job is working on different sets of data at the same time and that is very similar to assembly line processing so this is the simplest kind of parallel processing which is available in data stage that's called pipeline parallel processing now imagine that if you've got one assembly line processing and you're manufacturing model t but suddenly the market demand shoots up you cannot scale up because you cannot, even if you have got 100 more people, you have got just one assembly line. So the way you want to scale up is to have multiple parallel assembly lines. Exactly the same way, you have got a different kind of parallel processing which is available in data stage and that is called partition parallel processing. So whenever we talk of partition parallel processing, the incoming data is split into multiple different partitions and different instance of the same operation happens on each partition. As a result, you have much faster processing because different sets of data is being processed at the same time by different CPUs. So this, in brief, is about parallel processing. We would love to discuss more about more detailed concepts of parallel processing like configuration files, how do you de decide what is the method of parallel partitioning that we want to use, what would be the best uh, way to implement your business requirement from a parallel processing standpoint. There are a lot of questions. Unfortunately, we have got just five minutes, so we can't do justice to those questions. So, but we'll be more than happy to discuss with you and to come and help you with training sessions, consulting sessions. So for more information about PR3 systems and their training and consulting offerings, please visit our website at www.pr3systems.com or please phone up at 630-364-1469. We look forward to meeting you and helping you with your goals with information management software from, data, from IBM, which includes data stage, quality stage, information analyzer, and other products. Thank you. It was great talking to you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.